Hello everybody, Slim Kirby here, and welcome back to the Fortune Street playthrough. Last week, we finished both the Dragon Quest Tour and the Super Mario Tour, which means we're going to move on to the Special Tour now. Like I said before, there are three boards from each series, and uh, as usual, um, every Wednesday I'll cover the Dragon Quest board on Easy, and then I'll cover the uh, Mario board on Standard on Saturday. So, uh, let's go ahead and get started. The first board that is available to us is Aleph Guard, uh, the first Dragon Quest board, and that is what we're going to be doing first. So let's uh, go there and uh, get this started. I have a rather unique getup this time. I actually have some armor and some weapons, and I also have a Draki following me around too, so that should be fun. And also, we also have a very interesting competitor with us today, the Dragon Lord. He, like uh, Peach and Jessica, are is an s rank computer player, so we'll have to watch out for that. And uh, looks like I'm actually going to be going first this time. Also, if you couldn't figure it out, on the special tour, you get a mix of Dragon Quest characters and Mario characters. On the Dragon Quest boards, you have two Dragon Quest, one Mario, and on the Mario board, you have two Mario and one Dragon Quest. And, uh, on this board, we have Birdo, for whatever reason. No idea why the hell Birdo is here, but we'll deal with it, I guess. Okay, so we have a three, so we can get 190, 150, uh, 180... Or 90. Let's go for 190, I guess. Now, as you can tell, this board is really big. There's a lot of different districts, and uh, especially in this one district I'm going to, there's like some instances where there are like eight spaces in a row, and those are going to be the very lethal points. Those are going to be the points where... Basically, you're going to want to get all of the computer players to land on, so I would try everything I can to get those spaces, but obviously it's not always going to work, but you better try your damnedest, because if you don't, you're probably not going to win this board, just saying. You need to have a very good section to work with if you ever hope to win this board. That's just kind of the facts. Also, when it becomes my turn again, I want to check the uh, target amount, because I didn't look at that very carefully. I think it said 1,500, or... Why do I keep doing that? 15,000. Um, for some reason, I don't add a zero to whenever I'm reading those amounts, so... Yeah, it's uh, 15,000, I think. But I'll verify that, just to make sure. And it looks like Birdo already has a row being started. Thankfully, it's still kind of early in the game, so it's not necessarily going to become a trouble spot, but we will have to look out for that as we go throughout this board. Maybe our good friend the Dragon Lord can actually help us out in uh, fixing that little problem. Although, we'll see. Uh, the Dragon Lord is a very interesting computer AI. Um, he doesn't exactly do things uh, like an s rank computer player until much later on in the match. Obviously, it doesn't matter much in uh, easy rules, because easy rules, the only thing that really changes is basically how much they invest into a property. It's standard rules where you get into all the complicated stuff like stocks, and their behavior changes drastically. But, um, yeah, Dragon Lord is really interesting, because in terms of his movements, and also where he decides to land on properties... He's very random. But he, like I said, he becomes a much bigger threat later on. Uh, he is definitely more prone to buying out stuff if he sees something he can stop and uh, work with. And uh, he, can, he can be a very dangerous player. Just don't expect him to be very dangerous at first. Also, Birdo has three shops in a row now. No idea how the hell... Birdo made that work, but I'm not liking it one bit. 
we're really going to have to try to stop them, I guess. But it's okay, because with the direction I went on this board, I can actually sweep around and uh, work on that little line I have, or both lines that I have, actually, so... That's actually pretty good. I'm actually liking the way this is turning out so far. Also getting a lot of properties, too. I'm mixing and matching between expensive properties and cheap properties. Which may or may not be a good thing. Okay, seriously! What the heck, Birdo? Birdo is on a very early roll. And uh, that's going to be a very dangerous section. I swear, if Birdo gets another one, I might just have to scream. Because, my god, he, Birdo is like really... He's really setting the bar pretty high. Dragon Lord, you're going to have to do something, man. Because... I'm not liking that. And yeah, look at that. He actually avoided the arcade for an empty space, which... Honestly, I probably would have done the same thing myself, at least on this first turn. But... I, I did find out, like, off-camera, that there are certain AI that will avoid the arcade if they have a chance to land on it in every single situation. I believe Platypunk is actually one of those AI, so... Yeah, kind of interesting how the AI works in this game. Also, did I... Just avoided it, thank god. Well then, I'm kind of liking the way this is going. Don't get a one, don't get a one, okay, thank god. Yeah, Birdo, you have enough properties right now <laughs> in that little line, I, I swear. Just the fact that Dragon Lord's probably going to lose some money there is going to be kind of a eek situation, I guess. He didn't really even officially stop the line either. He kind of just got a property to later on, but yeah, we'll see. It's not over yet, I guess. Meanwhile, me and Angela are kind of splitting this side pretty well. I do like that I was able to move a little faster than he was so I could pick up some of these other properties. Like, uh, yeah, that's going to be really nice. And hey, if I get one of those cards that says warp to a certain square or buy out a certain property, I can easily, easily do something really great with that. But we'll see how that works. So obviously the best spots you want to go for are the uh, sections to the left of the spade and the, the right of the heart. Because technically if you want to get the suits, those sections are pretty unavoidable. And they actually kind of... Uh, basically extend to the other sections of the board too so that's really nice it's honestly a good place also that spot in the middle that spot can be a blessing or can be a curse on the one hand you'll get suits really really quickly but on the other hand um, there's also the uh, uh, take a break squares obviously and uh, Sometimes you may not land on the warp portal once you've gone around like five times, so... Kind of a mixed blessing, it kind of depends on the game you're playing, I guess. But, you know, it, it could be good. Uh, let's start from the bottom this time. 65... Forced buyouts. Uh, that's the normal buyout price, I believe. And, uh... Right now, I don't think there's really anything I want. If there is, it'd probably be this right here. Oh, only 550? Oh yeah, cuz this doubled that. Okay. Well then, in that case, yeah, sure, I'll buy that out. I'll take it off your hands. I'd waste some gold, yes, but I don't really care cuz in the end that section's going to be more dangerous, so might as well make use of it. He did get some ready cash for that, but he could always lose it at Birdo's section. Speaking of which, really liking that Birdo's losing money and hasn't gotten a, not really any other properties yet. But still, that little rampage that Birdo went on, that's like... That's annoying. Okay, so Dragon Lord... Oh, got a Suit Yourself card. Well, lucky him. 
Lucky, lucky him. Okay, well he got that stupid 170. Ah, that's lame. I didn't want to share my spaces with Angelo, but I'm honestly not surprised that it's kind of going to that, too. Okay, that works. I'll take that. Hooray! I have another line of shops. So yeah, like, see, there's like five, ro there's rows of five at the very beginning, there's those rows of eight, about, like, like I said before, next to the heart and spade, uh, rows of seven, there's just a lot of stuff, there's a lot of stuff here. Also, is it just me, or does it look like a golf course in the background? Kind of does. Um, I know I kind of talked about this before, and it actually uh, um, affected something I said in one of the other videos, but like I said before, I've never played any of the Dragon Quest series. I actually started playing Dragon Quest 1, like a few weeks ago, and I am liking it so far, I just need to, you know, pick up the game again. It's kind of hard because I'm in the middle of so many freaking other games already, but, um, I am trying to get into the Dragon Quest series, and, uh, hopefully, uh, when I return to this project later on in the year, after I do the next three weeks of boards, maybe I'll actually know a little more extra information about the games, so that is definitely something that could come from, uh, this Let's Play, me getting more familiar with the Dragon Quest series outside of the project. But, um, I am good doing that off-camera, but for the time being, like, there's still a lot of stuff I don't really know about the game and the series, so... If there's, like, a reference or something, or a call to another one of the games that I'm not getting, please understand that that's probably why. Because I've never played the games, so... I just wanted to quickly point that out again, because... I believe in the Mount Magma Get On boards... There was a point where Princessa started barking like a dog, and uh, I made a comment like, Dude, don't bark, you're not a dog, you're a human. And the funny thing is, in uh, the Dragon Quest game that Princessa's in, her entire country, or just herself, I don't remember which exactly, but they do actually turn into a dog. So, yeah, there was actually, like, a reference there that I didn't get because, well, like I said before, I'd never played those games. So, yeah, that's uh, basically what that's about. I actually found that out from not just you guys, but um, after I was watching those videos back, I was kind of thinking, you know, I kind of dismissed this way too easily. Maybe there is actually something I'm missing, and... Uh, yeah, sure enough, that turned out to be the case, so... I'll, uh, try to be more careful about that kind of stuff. Uh, obviously I don't want to get too many things wrong in this pl Damn it, I wanted to buy that out, actually. But, um, you know, I'll, I'll try to be careful with that stuff. I won't try to dismiss everything right off the bat. I'll try to remember that, oh, wait a second, there might actually be a reference here. But, um, yeah, um, that's kind of something I hope to do over the next uh, few months once I finish uh, this part of the playthrough and to get myself more familiar with some Dragon Quest info and uh, hell I might have some uh, things to talk about in the uh, board playthroughs when I actually do the Dragon Quest boards which uh, hell I'll be doing standard rules so those games will be a lot longer than what they've been in comparison with the Mario boards so eh, it'll be interesting But I am definitely very interested in uh, getting more familiar with the series, because uh, I think it'd be really cool, and it's the kind of RPG game that's actually up my alley. Um, I actually played the original Final Fantasy, and I did not like it, to be honest with you guys. I was not a very big fan of the first Final Fantasy game, but I'm playing through Dragon Quest, and I think it's really cool. I have a feeling that there's going to be a lot of level grinding, at least in the first game. But I'm okay with that. That's not a problem for me. Just something I noticed. 
But yeah, that's uh, basically all I wanted to discuss here, I guess. Oh god, I'm really hoping for a high number next roll so I can get past those damn properties. My god. I am not looking forward to that. Also, Dragon Dragon Lord has his first promotion, because he went in that little circle at the beginning. And, uh, yeah. This could be bad. He got an early start, which is uh, never a good thing when a C player, or not a C player, an S player, gets a head start. Usually that means bad things to come. And I don't like bad things. Bad things are not good. Okay, here we go. High roll, high roll, high roll. For a minute, I thought I was saying high rule. Um, 102 versus... Well, 24 is not too bad, but I don't want to risk landing on that 342, so let's go ahead and stop at the least evil of all those spaces. This way, maybe we can help that Birdo will uh, land on one of our spaces or something. Maybe. Uh, it's still kind of early to say. Oh god, this is not good. Oh no, he went he went there instead. I mean, I thought he was going to invest more, but... Um, no, he's kind of playing it safe right now. I'm still really worried about Birdo, though. Birdo is going to be a big issue if we don't neutralize her quickly. Okay, big number. I knew that was coming. Did I just land on... Oh, I land on my own property. Okay. Well, I could increase this, but I'm going to go ahead and increase this other space over here just to have something a little bigger when Birdo comes by. Plus, I'm almost home anyway, so... I think I should be okay. Okay, I had a feeling that was gonna happen. Okay, well, thankfully I already passed that, so... Not too yet. Angelo has to kind of make his, uh, round. Okay, he decided to do kind of the same idea I did. Basically avoiding any chance of landing on that 342. Okay, high number, high number. That should actually be a very good high number. I uh, know it, well, okay, I can buy that out, I guess. Didn't know if I want to buy that out too soon, though. Am I even going to have enough money? I think it's going to be 500. I think that's what I found out earlier. Eh, let's take a risk. Let's take a risk and go for it. I mean, with Birdo over there and her uh, giant line of four shops, I need something to compete with her. Otherwise, there's going to be no way. Just gonna have to play, uh. Avoid the properties, I guess. Or I could try to go to the, uh, warp zone. That might work, too. Okay, I had a feeling she was gonna get a high roll like that. And she actually landed on her property, too. Well, I'm actually glad I did that now, because she would have probably expanded it if, uh. She, uh. Went there later. Also, Dragon Lord, you're getting a lot of properties. And I don't want to spend a hundred on everything, so... Let's hope we can maybe... Do something good here. Okay, good. He actually stopped Birdo from getting any bigger. He, he made himself kind of big, though. In that little section, unfortunately, but... It's okay. We'll deal with it. Okay. 
God, Birdo is going to be a problem. Okay, six. Where do I want to go? I can get an 80 property, or I can go this way and pay 100 to Birdo. Yeah, no way in hell I'm doing that. Let's go down here. Okay, Roto's gonna get her first promotion. Seven twenty-nine. That's not too bad. She's a thousand ahead of me right now, which is kind of lame, but it's okay. We can catch up. I still need to check and see what the uh, turn amount's gonna be, or the target amount rather. I think it's kind of funny how the uh, D rank computer player is actually winning right now. It's kind of funny. And yes, Birdo is a D rank. So, in a way, this is kind of like the same exact setup we had for uh, Robin Hood Ruins an S, A, and a D. Sad. Also, very quickly, target conditions. Yeah, 15,000. Okay. I was pretty sure it was, but again, just wanted to make sure. Also, damn it. Come on, me. You're going to have to do better than that. Okay, I know exactly where she's going. Or maybe I don't. Okay. Guess she really wanted to pick up that property then. So I thought she was going to go around the Dragon, uh, Dragon Lord's properties and maybe expand her own to make her a little more dangerous, which honestly would have made a lot more sense. And what she did. Oh god, I do not like that right side of the board. Hell, even the left side of the board is looking kind of shaky. This is not going to be a good playthrough if I'm not careful. What I kind of need to hope for is uh, maybe like a bankruptcy or something, or an auction. Maybe pick up some of those shops on the left side so I can compete with the other side. Also, yeah, kind of giving away a lot of my money right now, but I need to keep my uh, shops in good condition. I need to keep building up as I'm going around. People keep landing on that one, though. That's interesting. Maybe Birdo will buy that out. Nope. Not quite. I would have bought it out, but that's me. I buy out a lot of stuff. Maybe I can kind of hope for the other computer players to maybe take themselves out while I kind of sneak by with a plan. That's like my only hope right now. Is that his first promotion? Yeah, it is. Okay. That actually took him a while to get. I'm kind of surprised. Okay, well... Oh, come on, really? Fine, I'll buy it. I'm going to keep on buying things, because this way I have uh, two rows of three, and that way if I... Lose all of my money, I can just auction off, like, another shop. That's, uh, kind of by itself. And then I can just put all of my focus into these line of properties. Plus, Birdo's coming this direction anyway. All of them are coming this way. They'll need to go by that section, amongst other sections. Actually, that's kind of good, because... 52!
roll low for uh, roll low, roll low for right now because uh, damn it, I knew he was gonna do that. I wanted them to roll low because that way they could they'd have to go through the spade section on the comeback. But I guess that works too, because I do have some properties over there.